In this topic, we're going to have a look at minor hybrid inheritance and the test cross. So, by the end of this topic, you should know what is mono hybrid inheritance, what is a pure breeding strain, what is the F1 and F2 generation, how do we do a genetic cross, and what is a test cross. So, what is mono hybrid inheritance? This is the inheritance of a single gene, for example, the gene for height in plants. What is a pure breeding strain? Well, if you repeatedly breed tall plants with tall plants and dwarf plants with dwarf plants, you get a pure breeding strain for each. Pure breeding strains can be bred for almost any character. What it means is that the organisms are homozygous. So here you can see the tall plant is homozygous, represented by capital T, capital T. The dwarf plants got both alleles the same, represented by small t, small t. So what is the F1 generation? Well, if the pure breeding tall plants are crossed with the pure breeding dwarf plants, all the offspring are known as the first filial generation, or F1 generation. Notice how all the plants turn out to be tall. This means that the allele for the dwarf plants is recessive, and the allele for the tall plants is dominant. So what's the F2 generation? If the heterozygous F1 generation are crossed with each other, the resulting offspring are called the F2 generation and they're always in the approximate ratio of three tall plants to one dwarf plant. So notice how the tall plant is for the dominant allele and the dwarf plant is the recessive allele. So the ratio is three dominant to one recessive. So what is the law of segregation or Mendel's first law? In diploid organisms, characteristics are determined by alleles that occur in pairs. Only one of each pair of alleles can be present in a single gamete. So what does this mean? Well, if you've got a plant and it's capital T, capital T, each allele will go into one gamete. So we're going to have a look at what this means in a moment. So representing what we had just seen in terms of plants, here you can see that when you plant the peas from the pure breeding tall plants and the pure breeding dwarf plants, the resulting plants are called the parental generation. When you cross these with each other, you get the F1 generation. So when you cross them with each other, you get lots of different seeds. You plant these and you notice how all the plants will be tall. So we call this the F1 generation. Now, if these are allowed to flower and self-pollinate, you're going to get the F2 generation. And the F2 generation will have lots of different seeds. When these are planted and grown, you're going to notice a ratio of 3 is to 1. So 3 tall to 1 dwarf plant. So how do we represent genetic crosses? Now, genetic crosses are usually represented in a standard form of shorthand. You must always carry out this procedure so that you get the marks in the exam. Even if you may understand what you're doing and might be tempted to leave out steps, don't. This is because the teacher or examiner might not be able to follow and you'll lose marks. So in this example, I want to do a genetic cross of plants that produce yellow pods and green pods. How do I know what letters to use? The first step is to choose the first letter of the contrasting features. It's a good idea to choose the letter in which the uppercase differs to the lowercase in form and size. So for example, I look at the yellow part, the green part, and I write the first letter. So capital G, capital Y. Now here you can see that the capital G is quite distinct from the small letter G, whilst the capital Y and the small letter Y are quite similar. So we're going to use capital G, little g, to represent our dominant and recessive features. So the third step is to let the uppercase, capital G, represent the dominant feature, which is green, and the lowercase represent the recessive feature, which is yellow. Now you don't use two different letters when one characteristic is dominant. So we're not going to use G and Y. We're using capital G, small g. Then you're going to write the word parent, and you're going to write phenotype, genotype. So the phenotype is homozygous green, homozygous yellow. Genotype is capital G, capital G, small g, small g. 
Then you're going to state the gametes produced by each parent. Label them clearly and put them in a circle. Circling the gametes reinforces the idea that the gametes are separate. Then you're going to use something called a Punnett square to show the results of the random crossing of gametes. So you're going to label the female and the male and you're going to cross them with each other. So when you have a capital G crossed with a small g, you're going to get big G, small g, big G, small g, big G, small g, big G, small g. Big g, small g. Then you're going to write the word F1 generation and you're going to write genotype, phenotype, phenotype ratio. So the offspring genotype is capital G, small g, and it's for all of them. The phenotype, which is the observable characteristic, is green. And the ratio is that you've got all green pods. So take note of these different steps. You have to write parent, phenotype, genotype, gametes, recombination, you do your Punnett square. If one generation, you write genotype, phenotype, phenotype ratio. Okay, let's do a question. I want to do a genetic cross between homozygous flies with normal wings and vestigial wings, which are small wings. Then we're going to cross the F1 generations with each other. So what's the first step? The first step is to look at a letter representing normal wings and vestigial wings. So if you write the letter to represent the different characteristics, here you can see that the normal wings are represented by capital A and vestigial wings are represented by small a. And you'll also notice that the normal wing characteristic is dominant to the vestigial wing characteristic. Then you're going to follow the different steps that you've just learned. You're going to write parent, phenotype, genotype, gametes. You're going to do the recombination and you're going to look at the genotype, phenotype, and then you're also going to write down the phenotype ratio. So if the final ratio is that all the flies have got normal wings, we say that the male and female parents were purebred lines. This means that they were homozygous. Now if you cross the F1 generations with each other, you'll see a ratio of 3 is to 1. 3 normal, 1 vestigial. This means that the parents are heterozygous flies. Now you need to keep these ratios in mind when we discuss test crosses. So if the parents are each homozygous, what ratio will your F1 generation be? It's going to be all of the dominant allele. If your parents are heterozygous, what will the ratio be? It'll be 3 is to 1. So what is a test cross? If I have a green plant, it can have one of two genotypes. It can either be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. It is not possible to tell which genotype the green plant has from the outward appearance. If we carry out a test cross, then we can determine the genotype. So what you do is you cross the plant with another plant that has the recessive phenotype of the same character. For example, small t, small t a dwarf plant. If your plant is homozygous dominant, capital T, capital T, all the offspring will be tall. If your plant is heterozygous, which means capital T, small t, half of the offspring will be heterozygous, capital T, small t, so the phenotype will be tall. The other half of the offspring will be homozygous recessive, small t, small t, and be dwarf. We're going to have a look at how this works. So let's do the test cross. What you do is you draw two columns down your page. One column represents the homozygous dominant genotype, whilst the other represents the heterozygous genotype. So you follow the different steps that you've learnt. You're going to write the parent, gametes, offspring. So if you do the test cross for if your plant was homozygous dominant, what will you notice about the end result? The phenotype ratio will be all tall. What if your plant was heterozygous? The phenotype ratio will be 1 is to 1. So you'll have half of your plants will be tall, 
half of your plants will be dwarf. So you need to remember these ratios. If your plant was homozygous dominant, your F1 generation will all be tall. If your plant was heterozygous, your F1 generation will be 1 is to 1. Okay, let's look at another question. Dalmatian dogs have got two phenotypes for spot color coded by a single gene. Black spots are dominant over liver spots. A breeder has a black spotted bitch. How can she determine the genotype? So we're going to say let the allele for black spots be capital B. Let the allele for liver spots be small b. So if the phenotype is black spots, it's capital B, small b. Or it can be capital B, capital B. If it's got liver spots, it'll be small b, small b. So what do you do? You draw a column, you write homozygous dominant in one, heterozygous in the other, and then you work out your test cross. So if the parent was homozygous dominant, what will you notice about the F1 generation? All of them will be black. If your parent was heterozygous, the ratio would be 1 is to 1. 1 black, or half of them would be black, half of them would be liver colored. So why actual results of genetic crosses are really the same as the predicted results? So if you look here, the ratio should be 3 is to 1. These are Mendel. Here you can see the actual results of Gregor Mendel. You can see that the Mendel didn't get an exact ratio of 3 is to 1. This is due to the statistical error. It's therefore important to use large numbers of organisms. So the larger the sample, the more likely are the actual results to match the theoretical ones. So here you can see in Mendel's results, the larger his number or the sample size, the closer his predicted, the ratio is to the predicted ratio. So 2.96 to 1, which is quite close to 3 is to 1. So what have we looked at in this topic? We've looked at what is monohybrid inheritance. This is the inheritance of a single gene. What is a pure breeding strain? It's where the genotype is homozygous. What is the F1 and F2 generation? This is the first and second filial generations repre represented in the offspring. When you do a genetic cross, remember that all the different steps that you have to do, you've got you have to write the parents, the recombination, the gametes, the offspring. And remember how to do a test cross. It's used to find out if an organism is homozygous dominant or heterozygous. And remember your ratios. Remember that when you cross it with an organism that is homozygous recessive, the ratios that you expect will be all of them, if your plant was homozygous, then all of your offspring will be what? It'll show the dominant characteristic. If your plant was heterozygous, only 50% will show the dominant characteristic. And that concludes our lesson, the end.